Yale in the dark blue, Auburn in the home white. Kessler versus Kelly. We are underway at Auburn Arena. And the Tigers control the opening tap. Let's go, Auburn! Let's go, Auburn! Only loss for the Tigers this year in double OT against UConn. Zepp Jasper, the transfer out of College of Charleston, goes to work. Cambridge attacking and foul. First personal on Isaiah Kelly. Free throws coming. Well, Devin Cambridge, one of the returners for Auburn. Uh, you know, you look at this 215-pound 6'6 junior out of Nashville, Tennessee. I think he's critical to the success of the Auburn Tigers. His athleticism, his length, but most importantly, his experience. He knows what Coach Bruce Pearl expects from this basketball team. And with all the new faces, he's certainly a key cog for the Auburn Tigers. And for a team that's got, you mentioned all the different personalities coming together got a guy that's been there and done that it certainly will pay dividends for you two for two at the strike Auburn on the board first Yale Bulldogs at five and four led by Swain as a DK been solid making his ninth start of the season give him a little beat down low and Jalen Gabadon coming off a career high 22 and a comeback win against Lehigh and in that game Yale scored 57 second half points, Damien. Well, Jalen Gabadon is a, a high major athlete. Uh, I'm anxious to see, though, how he steps up in this basketball game. They had a tremendous second half because of him, but in the first half, he only took one shot. They're going to need him to play early and often along with Swain here on the road. Kelly launching, comes up short. Cambridge the rebound. Starting five for AU. We told you about Jabari Smith, Cambridge, the experience. Kessler gives him a little size and rim protection inside. Transfer out of North Carolina. Rebound cleared by Gabadon. Here comes Yale. Gabadon contact, no whistle. Jabari Smith clears. The Walker. big man in transition. Walker Kessler, one of those young men who I think will play at the next level because of what he just showed you. Uh, he gives Auburn rim protection, a guy who's averaging uh, so many blocks right now. It's early in his career here, but the Twin Towers are in a full effect for Auburn. Oh, I like the Twin Towers. You can sell me on that. Jump ball goes back to Yale. Bulldogs still scoreless. Kessler and that defense, David. Well, we talk about him giving rim protection, and he has a basketball IQ on both ends of the floor. I, I say this all the time, that having a basketball IQ is just as effective defensively as it is offensively. Kessler possesses that for the Tigers. DK attacking Kessler the block. We saw he had six blocks Wednesday against UCF. One of the keys to a weeding, a good victory against an American Conference opponent. Bulldogs get it back. Here comes Swain, one on two. He'll pull the trigger. And a foul called against Yale. Roy, that's the second on Kelly. Well, Roy, when you, well, and, and, and that's what Coach Jones is worried about, the, the, massive athleticism and size of Auburn. Uh, they won't face this in the Ivy League, and a lot of teams don't have this in the country, but two Yale's defense right now, they've absorbed kind of the first punch of the Auburn Tigers. That's what they usually come out and try to do. Off last, Jeff Jasper, silky smooth. Let me clarify as well, that last foul went against Cotton. Another block. Smith left open. He's got that shot in the arsenal. 7-0 Auburn. And a quick timeout called by James Jones. Extra uh, enthusiasm because of the year being away from the game, right? And, and there's nothing better than college basketball right now, obviously big SEC title matchup today between Georgia and Alabama, but now the college basketball is in full effect, Roy. I think these fans are taking it to another level. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I heard a Go Dogs chant about an hour before <laughs> tip right behind us here at the jungle, so these fans are well aware of what's to come later today. They want Georgia to beat the arch rival Alabama. Well, I tell you, these fans right now are excited about basketball as well, right? Yeah. Anytime you 
maybe don't reach what you expected or hoped for in one sport, then they usually take that energy and put it into another sport. And right now they're doing that for college basketball here in Auburn. Bulldogs have seen five of their or three of their first five shots rejected. In and out for Gabadon. I don't want to say Auburn's a basketball school. You go back and you look over the last five seasons, no team in the SEC has won more games than Bruce Pearl's club. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I think he's one of the more underrated coaches. And you look at the, the coaches and the schools that, that you're competing with, Tennessee and Coach Barnes, Coach Cal Wade, and obviously Coach Musselman. Woo! A lot of action going on here at Auburn Arena as well, though. Cardwell on the alley-oop. 9-0. Well, backdoor cut. Gavadon couldn't finish the block. Yeah, I like his mindset, though, but you got to finish that here on the road. They need to see it go through the hoop. Cardwell pushed from behind, and another foul against the Bulldogs. Well, one of the things that we didn't talk about at the outset is the depth on this basketball team. Dylan Carwell, a young man that worked tremendously hard to get himself in shape in the offseason. <laughs> one of the more emotional and passionate players for the Auburn Tigers just gives you a little display of the type of depth that they have. Chris Moore checking in for the first time for the Tigers. Wendell Green Jr. Off a of motion set, Katie Johnson the rack. You know, Roy, you talked about Coach Bruce Pearl really digging into his guys at the shoot-around. He did the same thing in practice. He said, I'm not the one that should be getting you guys ready. He said, this isn't my team. This is your team. And the players are responding to the emotion and passion of Coach Bruce Pearl. Yeah, here he didn't like the body language early this morning. I'd say they've responded quite nicely so far to start this afternoon. Yale needs a bucket. Swain can't get it. More clears. This is not the game of Yale right now. They can't get into this style and tempo versus the horses that Auburn has. Katie Johnson shaking up in that last sequence. Under the basket for five minutes in. The score tells the story. 11 nothing. Top 25 Auburn out in front. What makes these? They bring a genre, a uh, an environment and culture of toughness. And so my guess is on the sideline, they probably asked him, what were you doing laying on the court so long? <laughs> but they have him chuckling now. Kessler inside, more the rebound. And the fight for the loose ball comes out to Yale. Azar Swain. Bulldogs need a bucket in the worst way. DK wants it and was fouled midair. Well, let's remember, Yale, we talked about that they struggled a little bit at Seton Hall. Seton Hall wasn't surprised that they were able to knock off Michigan, considered one of the better recruiting classes in the country this year that Jawan Howard has. Uh, but in that Lehigh game, I saw something different from Yale. Yale started out down double digits and were able to come back and win that game by double digits. So don't expect this team to quit here on the road. There is firepower. They can shoot the three. You think of Yale basketball, or James Jones, the conference championships we talked about. Sure. They kind of know what they're doing on offense, so we'll see maybe if they weather this early storm. Try to be the hang-around team. Rejected inside. That was Jarvis. And Kessler said not this afternoon. Well, I really like the size that Jarvis has. You know, he's one of the guys that I really was impressed with. He didn't play in the Seton Hall game, but you saw some of his athleticism, his girth, and his size. The challenge that he has is the length uh, of Walker Kessler here in this basketball game. Tigers already with six rejections. That's right at their season average. We're not even six minutes in. August Mahoney checks in. He'll set up the offense. Here's Matthew Cotton, left side of the paint. Williams bothered his shot. 
And with eight to shoot, Yale gets it back. What makes Auburn a challenging team when you go against them is, uh, just like the NBA, they switch multiple positions on the defensive end, but they have guys that are lean and mobile who are pretty good at defending and using their length at different positions. Yale starts 0 for 11. Make it 0 for 12. I mean, you're going to see Auburn do this to teams this year where Bruce Pearl's club gets out to a fast start and they just overwhelm you in waves. Yeah, well, especially in the non-conference where they've been so dominant, 36-plus victories. Uh, this crowd is, is probably one of the more underrated crowds, I think, in college basketball as well. First Jay goes down for Matthew Cotton. Yale on the board. That's a long two. Well, we talked about the high major athleticism. Matthew Cotton is another guy who's going to have to step up here on the road, the 6'5", 200-pound team. Green from the logo connects. 14-2. Open look, Gabadon connects. That's a big basket for Yale, make it 14-5. And the first triple for the Bulldogs. Well, known as a defensive player. He was the 2020 Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year. But offensively is where he's made his biggest strides, Roy, in this season. You're in postseason four yeah. right now. I'm digging <laughs> it. I like it. You got all the stats ready for me, Williams. Jalen Williams starts connecting. That's just his third three of the season. Look out. Like a boxer who throws his punches early. Don't expect this the entire game. I'm getting them all out of the bag. Swain. Yeah. Yale now 2 of 15 from the floor. He can shoot it. See, Roy, one of the challenges with Auburn is you don't want to get caught up into the speed and tempo in which they play. But because of Walker Kessler, along with Jabari Smith Jr., uh, and a lot of the length that they have, you actually need to score early. Good look inside to Cotton. He's got four. Pretty basketball. Right now, Yale has figured out that because of the pressure that Auburn is displaying, that they've shown vulnerability to the back cut. Let's go, Auburn! I mean, I think of Ivy League Let's basketball. Go, I think of the back cut. Sure. Yeah, Sneaking in Princeton. through the back door. Williams. Kessler. Using the size. Swain comes away with it. And inside a foul call. Free throws coming for E.J. Jarvis. Well, we talked about Auburn throwing that first blow. I like the fact that Yale is a guy who can go get a basket at any time. We talk about Javari Smith Jr., Walker Kessler. I think they have an underrated backcourt. But if you add him to the mix, then you have to add Auburn as well to elite level teams in college basketball who can make a run at it uh, come late in March. 17 to 8. Bulldogs and the Tigers here at Auburn Arena. Jasper penetrating. And tapped out. Back to Yale. You know, one thing that I've noticed about this Auburn team is they have a tendency to take their foot off of the gas pedal. They did that in the UConn game and UConn responded outstanding in the Bahamas. What a fun game that was as it went into overtime. UConn, a team that plays with as much grit and toughness in the country. I'm anxious to see if they can continue to keep their foot on the gas pedal at home today. And that's going to be a challenge for a team that's got so many new faces. Cotton from downtown. 17 to 11, and he's got seven early points. Yeah, leads the team with 19 three-pointers. Uh, you look at this Yale team that has tremendous pieces, and you, you you know there was a reason why Coach Bruce Pearl was pushing his team. Williams off the mark. Cardwell the rebound. It's tapped away. How about the baseball pass to Malloy? Foul from behind. A late whistle. Second on Williams. I love it. 
for Yale right now, they finally figured out the pace of the basketball game. They're not playing intimidated right now. It's almost like they've said, listen, we know they're talented, they're long. This is a great team out of the SEC, but we can play with these guys. They feel like they've already been to Seton Hall, and so they've looked at a talented, athletic team. Malloy, four of six from the stripe now. Don't forget, coming up Tuesday night on ESPN, also the ESPN app, Texas Tech taking on 13th-ranked Tennessee, the Jimmy V Classic at MSG. Then old rivals square off as well. Number six, Villanova and Syracuse, led by Buddy Bayheim. And don't forget to donate to the Jimmy V Foundation. Go to v.org slash donate. Meanwhile, the Bulldogs in the midst of an 8-0 run. Well, and a lot has transpired since they've changed as Devin Cambridge actually knocks down a three-point shot. But they've changed to uh, kind of a 2-2-1 two -two or uh, three-quarter court pressure that slowed Auburn down in the fast break a little bit. Kelly, the spin rejected by Cardwell. Mahoney baseline. Halfway through the first half. Here on the plains. This is where if you're Yale, you've got to continue to get consecutive stops. It's allowed them to get out on their break and score where Auburn's not set up defensively. Berman checking in for the first time, 24 and white. He's a shooter. It'll stay on this end. And now they'll change course. Rob Bort on the far side. Overruled the call from Terry Weimer. What'd you think, Roy? We saw it in slow motion. I think Auburn's <laughs> going to get it back right now. That's what I think. Bobby agrees. Well, right now, when you look at this basketball game, the tempo was all Auburn early. This is more to the liking of Yale's tempo and style of play. Jabari Smith, look out. Foul from behind. Malloy got him. Well, and you look at Malloy and, and, and his size, right? Jack Malloy is 6'8", 225 pounds. Jabari Smith Jr. has actually got him by a couple of inches at 6'10", but he has the mobility and foot speed to go by him. It's one of the reasons why they love him at the next level. It's a player in his first year, has four 20-point games already. That leads the SEC. We spoke with him this morning, and, and honestly, Fish, there's not a box on the checklist that is not checked. The I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. He can shoot the three. Fantastic upbringing. His dad, as you mentioned, played in the league for 10 years, sure. also at LSU. Bloodlines are there. And he works hard at the game when it's not required of him. Yeah. He's in the gym getting up shots at 5 o'clock in the morning. And I think it helps, Roy, that he has other quality players around him, like Devin Cambridge, right, that made that shot. He's got other guys to where he doesn't have to be a Patrick Baldwin Jr. and do it all of himself. Cambridge has seven to go along with five boards already. And Smith has had a bevy of NBA scouts and general managers already watching him play. Look at it. Pretty special. Ten and white, Jabari Smith, an emerging star, not only in the SEC, but in the country. Auburn fans, enjoy them while you can. Smith with seven. Three rebounds. Auburn doubling up Yale. And over the back. Foul called against the Tigers. Well, we talked about what makes Jabari Smith Jr. so good. One of the things we didn't talk about is his passion, right? Look at him on the defensive end, active defensively, able to get out, save the basketball, and then hands down, man down. In the words of Mark Jackson, you know the rules, and the bench loves it on the sideline. Good culture, good chemistry on this Auburn team here early, Roy. Yeah, and that was one of the things he said he loves most about playing at Auburn, the chemistry on this team. Mm. 
and the fact that it feels like everybody's on the same page right out of the gate. Swain from downtown. Well, he's been quiet here early, but they need him to, to continue to step up. We talked about his three-point shooting. I think he needs to get to the free throw line as well. He shoots about 84%. That's a way that you can control the game here on the road in a hostile environment. And Swain just one of six to start. Smith bottled up. Lost the handle. Turned it over by the D by Gabadon. Excellent defense by Gabadon. Swain gets it back and rejected. Cambridge. We think about 35 and white. You think about the alley oops, the threes, the defense. Pretty impressive right there. Well, you talk about impressive. Auburn fans are loving it right now, Roy. We talked about Walker Kessler, Jabari Smith Jr. Brown, Jared Harper shooting the three. The run was magical. And who knows what this team, Fish, could be capable of this year? Because think about it. You got that man coming back. At some point, probably later this month, in Allen Flanagan. Well, he's a guy that most people are looking at as a late first-round pick and hasn't even played a game this season. Uh, I think he brings a guy who can go get a basket at any time. We talk about Jabari. And, uh, yeah, he's going in the NBA draft next summer. He's a one and dunner, but he may not be the only player on this roster that's set for pro ball. Yeah, there hadn't been a better league, uh, really, in college basketball. ACC has been exceptional as well, but as far as producing first-round draft picks the last couple of years, uh, I don't know if you've seen better. And, and right now, uh, Yale, as much as we're talking about the pros in the SEC and the job that college bas or that Auburn's doing, Yale has had an incredible response, Roy. Uh, the, the only difference, the, the turnovers, the rebounds are about the same. The only difference are the blocks for Auburn right now. That's what's differentiating the scoreboard right now. Yale now four of nine from downtown. Get back in it. Jabari Smith. Back iron. Mahoney the board. That's one of those shots where if you make it, it's a good look. If you don't, you wonder if you're questioning it a little bit early because Jabari can get that shot anytime. Offensive nice rebound look. by Jarvis. Shot clock did not reset, and that's a turnover. Mahoney thinks otherwise. Uh, I felt like Mahoney. I don't know what he was complaining about there. That's, that's off the knee. <laughs> that's obvious. I saw on three. I saw four. Right now, Auburn, who has a size advantage, has been shooting all from the perimeter. If I'm Auburn right now, I'm taking the basketball back inside, seeing if I can get some action inside that paint area. Tigers 5 of 11 from deep. Green off the mark. Jarvis the board. And that was off the leg of Swain. Yeah, Auburn's got guards that are a little bit smaller when you talk about Wendell Green Jr., the 5'11", 175-pound sophomore, but uh, he, he's he's gritty, he's tough, uh, he's testy, and, and he's one of those guys that if you're playing against him offensively, he's going to get on your nerves throughout the basketball game, but he's a perfect teammate if you have him because I think he sets the tone for Auburn defensively. Transfer out of Eastern Kentucky was all Atlantic Sun a year ago. And has already dropped a team high 29 times. Wendell Green Jr. Out of Detroit. Back door. Cambridge. Michael Feinberg checking in for the first time for Yale. in to shoot. And a desperation eat by Cottons off the mark. Love the poise and patience that Yale is displaying right now. We talked about this hostile environment and right now Coach Bruce Pearl trying to find which matchups, which lineup goes well. He always has the mindset of his 10 are better than your 10. Uh, but right now I would give credit to, to Yale because they've changed the tempo and pace of this basketball game and I think it's frustrating the Auburn Tigers a little bit. Tigers jumped out to an 11-0 lead before Yale kind of settled in. It does feel like they've weathered that early AU storm. 
And Johnson with a personal. Under six to play. Fun start. Auburn Arena. Here in our first half. And a seven-point advantage. I always like to see how players responded to these early morning games. I didn't start drinking coffee until I was long past college right now. Well, I mean, it is the afternoon, but the shoot around this morning was at 7.30 local. It was pretty early. Yeah, right? too early for me if I'm playing college basketball. Offensive foul on Gabadon. What's interesting, too, for Yale, you mentioned this earlier. James Jones talked about it with us as well. It's a team that didn't play basketball last year. The Ivy League set out last season due to the pandemic. Right. And so this roster returned a lot of players from the 2020 team that claimed the Ivy League championship, but they didn't play last year, so it's got to be kind of a different vibe. Johnson healthy, and Johnson attacking at the rack. He's got four. Roy, you think about that as a player, just to have an entire year off. Uh, even for Allen Flanagan, for Auburn, just having a little time off. It's such a huge difference to get your rhythm back. Johnson left wide open. And it connects. Tiger 6 of 12 from deep. Lead back to 12. And from the corner, a nice response for DK. DK started all eight games uh, that he's appeared in his first starts of his career. And you can see he's very cool and calm, under pressure. Nice answer from KD Johnson. I love what Bruce Pearl told us this week with his backcourt. He was talking about Zepp Jasper, Wendell Green Jr. And he said, you know, Jasper's not going to turn it over. You know what you get with Green. You don't really know, and that's okay because right. he can get creative and do some different oh! things. And there's the Smith. <laughs> Cotton fouled on the three by Cambridge. You oh, see the mama. fans grabbing their heads, and a message sent across college basketball and for all the nba scouts out there right now they're looking at me as top five but jabari smith jr wanting to put the world on notice right now that he is a potential number one draft pick in the house today is mitch kupchak gm of the charlotte hornets kind will get three you know i was talking to an nba scout last night and uh, he said, when you look at Chet Holmgren, uh, the most potential on the upside could potentially be there for him. You look at uh, Paolo Bencaro, and he's the type of guy, if you want somebody who's going to help you in right now, that at this point of the, of the season, he's that guy. But Jabari Smith Jr. kind of gives you a mixture of both of those. Still has an impeccable upside, but can also give you a lot more right now with his versatility. We'll have a seat on the bench. One more for Cotton. One for three at the strike. Ten to shoot for Zeph Jasper. No problem. Thirty six twenty three Auburn seven of 14 behind the three point arc and Swain with the elbow J we talked about Swain and how well that he would need to play guy who played AAU for the mass rivals actually they went undefeated in the summer of 2016 and ranked number one in the country so he's not intimidated by this hostile environment on the road. 2016, a long time ago. Williams back to work. Inside gets the bounce. 2016, also the year that Yale upset Baylor in the NCAA tournament. But I say that 2016 was a long time ago to make us feel older than we are because <laughs> that's a sad state of affairs 
2016 was a long time ago. We age like fine wine, brother, like fine wine. I appreciate that sentiment. <laughs> Let me tell my kids about that. <laughs> These last two and a half minutes critical for Yale to stay in this basketball game. Nice box out by Williams, lost the handle. They'll get it back. How about the outlet? Showtime! Good God. <laughs> Cotton, the response. Much what, needed bucket. What a huge answer by Cotton. We talked about the 6'5", 200-pound junior. Leads the team with 19 three-pointers, and what a big three-pointer that was, Roy. He's got 11 of Yale's 28. Under two to go. Johnson off the pump fake. Count it! Eight of 16 from downtown are the Auburn Tigers. Johnson loves it. Patient finish pays off for Feinberg and a timeout call. What an environment right now. We talked about one of the best environments in college basketball. This guy knows what it's all about over Jordan Hare Stadium. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to mistake him for Bo Nix, but I mean, is Auburn still a football school when you got this team making a run to the Final Four? I mean, it's sacrilegious to suggest it, but you can do, you can have multiple sports. You can have success in multiple multiple sports. That's right. right. You can. <laughs> I'm not trying to fool anybody here, but hey, this team, this season, with that player and his teammates, uh, could be in store for something quite special once again. If you're Yale. You hope to get this potentially back within single digits. You need to be patient, poised here. You've had some at the rim baskets, knock down some big threes. DK gets it back, comes up short. Jarvis lost the handle, and Johnson ripped it loose. Yeah, that's where you've got to convert. Give credit to Jarvis down there battling. Uh, but right now, when you look at Auburn, there's so many weapons that you have to deal with. We talk about Jabari Smith Jr., but uh, Walker Kessler hadn't even had his best game today, uh, who has uh, an excellent ability to score on the interior. Devin Cambridge, Jalen Williams, it's just so many that are coming at you. Tigers trying to go two for one there, the long jumper by Smith. Shot clock did not reset right away. So Yale can play for the final shot of the half. Johnson with a steal. Johnson, plenty of time. Little Euro step, no good. And the 47 first half points, the most scored by Auburn in a first half this season. Extremely impressive. These and tell you that Yale in its last two basketball games in the second half is averaging over 55 points per. So we'll see if they got that kind of firepower here today. Well, it's got to start on this end, Roy, defensively. They have to do a better job of just getting stops. I thought Auburn was very good in the second half with only two turnovers. Tigers 8 of 16 from deep Cambridge. Contact no whistle. Johnson at 12 in the first half. An air ball to start the second. And Cardwell cleans it up. And Swain appears to be shaken up. Near the top of the key. Tigers with their largest lead now at 19, and Swain, leading scorer, first team all conference player in the Ivy, taking his time to try to collect himself. He was checking his nose, make sure everything was still intact. And he's going to tough it out. Now, yeah, there's nothing worse than being on the road in a hostile environment and not getting a call and then getting hit in the nose. 
Kind of adds insult to injury. And looks like he caught the left side of Dylan Carwell's elbow. Big, strong, aggressive elbows that Dylan Carwell has as well. Had a similar play. It's pretty much the last minute I played pickup basketball. Taking one right in the chops. That's it for me. <laughs> Swain can't do it. Good look inside. Cool. That cuts have been something that Coach Jones has really done a nice job of finding. Uh, I, I like the fact that they're using the aggressiveness that Auburn has against them, but they've got to get it done on this end. Auburn picked fifth in the SEC preseason poll. Yale was projected to win the Ivy League. And they've done that each of the last two years. And that conference has played college hoops. Of course, off last season as we documented. Cardwell to put back. This is what I think Auburn needs to continue to improve upon. Now, Dylan Cardwell got that in on an offensive rebound. The fact of the matter is, Auburn needs to be throwing the basketball inside on the block anyway just to make it easy on themselves offensively. Swain was fouled. Late whistle against Johnson, his second. Well, this is what we talk about, keeping your eyes on man and ball. A nice job of Cotton going back door. Anytime you have your defender turn their head to look at the ball, as Devin Cambridge did on that particular play, it's your opportunity to go back door. Swain, 84% at the line. We mentioned the preseason poll in the Ivy League this year. Harvard, Princeton, and Penn rounding out the top four for James Jones. That conference, you know, they played a pretty legit non-conference schedule sure. to kind of get back in the mix of things, including some games against SEC foes already. Well, and Coach Bruce Pearl, when I spoke with him at practice, he said, that's what we want to do in our non-conference schedule. We want to play the teams that are picked to win the league, like a Yale, because we know they're quality teams year in and year out. We want to go and play at South Florida and have those difficult tasks. Cambridge top of the key, now in double figures. The lead swells to 20. Two minutes into our second half. Yeah, you're in the danger zone right now if you're Yale. Got Brown and Maryland coming up into this month. Harvard and Kansas. And three games that have already taken place. Gabadon tracks it down. Shot clock at 10. Here comes Cambridge. Cardwell wants the alley-oop. And a patient finish pays off. Well, Dylan Cardwell gets the start here in this second half. And right now he's taking full advantage of it. He's active. He's aggressive. Playing with the high motor. Back iron swing. Tapped out to Jasper. Wide open. Cambridge. And Cotton off the mark, but Swain cleans it up. Swain with nine. Nice job of Yale using that stop to get back and score before the length of Auburn got back. Uh, a lot of times teams want to slow it down when they first size and, and super talented teams. Your best chance to score is before they get that collective talented defensive length back, and that's what Yale has done. Cardwell fouled from behind. That was Isaiah Kelly. Now Jabari may have banged up his wrist. Hitting the deck there, you see him grabbing the right wrist. Well, I've actually sprung and even fractured my wrist before. It's not a good feeling. Uh, but what you love about that, if you're watching college basketball in the next level, is that you have a top five pick that got on the floor. I think that exemplifies what type of culture that they have at Auburn. How about drawing the contact? Little and one finish next level. Yeah, he's got his daddy's toughness. I played against his father here. Jabari Smith actually uh, stopped our home winning streak of, of 30 games in a row, and he had that same grit and toughness that his son is displaying, that passion, that motor, uh, and, and even the similar skill set. You know, we asked him this morning, you know the scouts are watching. 
You know the general manager of the Charlotte Hornets is in the house today, Mitch Kupchak. How do you not put too much pressure on yourself? How do you, you know, try to keep it all in check? And he said, you know what? Growing up around pros, mm. I'm used to it. I understand the game. And honestly, I don't think about it. That's what he said, Fish. And I really like that response because that's how he plays. That's how he carries himself. Now, Swain, a little extracurricular activity there. Wendell Green, Jr. <laughs> well, when you're dealing with KD, you know, KD Johnson is the type of guy who is always going to be the toughest guy. He, he wants the action. He sets the tone uh, for the team. And if, if you allow him, he can frustrate you. And I, and I love the response <laughs> by both players, right? KD Johnson, he's going until the whistle blows, fighting for that loose ball, scrapping. You love to see that out of your team. And then at the same time for Swain, even though he's on the road, you know, they're down. Uh, he's not backing down right now. Johnson's kind of built like a hybrid running back linebacker with that upper body. He's got the broad shoulders. You won't mess with him. That he relaxes, getting away from the court, Damian Fishback. Well, listen, Jaden Joseph and Chaya Grace are two young ladies that make him slow down in his tracks. He doesn't want phone calls. He doesn't want to hear from recruits, no Auburn fans. When he gets around his grandbabies, he's in another world. Love it. After all that, Yale gets it back. They got to hurry. Five on the shot clock. Swain. Little step back jumper. How about stretch Akinbola on the floor. Yeah, so much length on this team right now. You look at some of the top teams across the country, whether it's Purdue, or you talk about Baylor, Duke, Gonzaga. There's so much length on those teams. It's. You know, I, I think it's one of the best years we've had in a long time in college basketball. And the super seniors coming back. You got a lot of experience. Green off the mark. Smith on the offensive glass. Going to work. And a chance for three. We talked about Jabari Smith Jr. versatility, his ability. Top 25 rankings in a four-hour special. It all starts at noon Eastern after Sunday NFL countdown on ESPN. Also, the ESPN app. College Football Selection Show, presented by AT&T 5G. Over on ABC right now, Oklahoma State trying to complete a comeback against Baylor. And I think the Pokes are going to do it. I've got them in the Final Four, along with Cincy, Michigan, and Georgia. And, uh, Fish, it looks like we are... Uh, Thinking different things. You got you got roll tied in there. You got Bama going. Well, I just don't understand how a man who's been as successful as Coach Nick Saban uh, and has lost what one time to his assistant coaches this year over at Texas A&M that everybody just thinks he's going to walk out there and lose the SEC championship. I mean, he's an underdog for the first time in over 90 games. So there may be something to it, but Georgia. Oh, they're for real now. Coach man, they're Smart. good. They're so good. Jarvis inside. Smith the rebound. Great. Nice pass. And Moore was fouled by DK. I just like talking football with you. That puts a <laughs> smile on my face. Basketball guy talking about the gridiron. That's good stuff. Uh, Coach James Jones wishes this was football instead of basketball right yeah. now. This is this is uh, this is an, an intriguing team, Roy. Because and I watched Auburn in, in their previous game against Central Florida. Central Florida came to fight. It was a one possession game against Oklahoma, who I think is going to uh, compete and do an extremely good job in the Big 12 as well. Uh, but you, you can't even press. It's hard to press Auburn because of their length. Jabari Smith Jr., Walker Kessler just kind of threw over the press as the game went on. Uh, it's going to be a challenge to win here at Auburn Arena throughout this season. I think that's an understatement. Mention the Tigers picked fifth in the SEC preseason poll. I think you're going to be hard-pressed to find four teams in the league better than this one it is early and I mean you think about coach Cal has UK back and Ty Ty Washington bunch of new players new transfers Nate Oates in Alabama 
Note in Arkansas, Tennessee. Rick Barnes done a great job recruiting. So, I mean, I, I get it. Who are you going to pick over and over? Sure. I, I'm just telling you. We haven't seen Alan Flanagan play ball yet this season. Sure. And potentially he's a game changer, as you indicated, back in the first half. So just file that away. My guess is they end up higher than number five. Well, what I love about all of those teams that you see there is the guard play. Uh, and, and they have veteran guard play, whether it's Savir Wheeler at Kentucky at the point, whether it's Pinson over at LSU, whether you're looking at Quinterly and Shackelford over at Alabama. You know, Kennedy Chandler isn't a veteran, uh, but Vescovy's a veteran. Uh, Victor's a veteran. I uh, see Josiah what you did there. George you got Games. the name right, too, just nice and easy. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. Well, well played on your part. Gray the floater. Woo. I mean, Bruce just kind of waved his arms like, okay, yeah. all right, all right. 65-38, six minutes into the second half. Look at the effort, the hustle, and the turnover. Gray launching. Come on, man. This arena would have taken off, and if you're Yale right now, you want to try to get this down to 10 points in this next 5 to 10 minute stretch. Whew, it's tough. Stretch. The block. Fish, we're, we're a long way from 10 points, my friend. Well, and the only way they're able to do that is this end. You got to get hot defensively. You got to get some stops. Let's go! And the problem is of the number of weapons that Auburn brings. That's one. Williams missed the three. DK on the other end. Moore says no. Nice Green. pass. Dropping it down to Moore. Wendell Green Jr. in the open floor. It feels like he's going to make something happen potentially that's special. You mentioned Bo Nix earlier. These fans behind us have been watching the game over on ABC <laughs> in the arena. Oklahoma State, if you care about such things, fourth down and goal with a potential go-ahead touchdown with 30 seconds to play. We'll give you permission to go watch the end of that. Just come right back to us on ESPNU. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Swain rejected again. And the Auburn fans here in attendance want Oklahoma State to win so Alabama doesn't sneak into the playoff later tonight. <laughs> so that's what's going on there. Well, one of the oldest rivalries in all the sports, Auburn-Alabama. It's great for the state, and both teams have certainly been in an upward trajectory in between the lines in basketball. A little up and under by Moore. Gabadon comes up short. More of the rebound. He's been a spark in the second half. And Williams fouled on the alley-oop. <laughs> well, Chris Moore is one of those silent assassins that you have in the Southeastern Conference. And he's taken advantage of Al Flanagan being out. You know, he's got outstanding size. He's built like a truck at 6'6", 240 pounds. When you talk about football players, he could be a tight end. Uh, I'm sure Coach Bruce Pearl wouldn't want us uh, saying that, but uh, I think he's really good defensively. Uh, he can guard bigger guys. Uh, he's, he's extremely versatile, and he's shown improvement while being at Auburn. By the way, when Flanagan returns, what happens? Because it's going to cost somebody minutes. Sure. I'm not smart enough to tell you who that player is going to be. But, I mean, you have to adjust your rotation if you're Bruce Pearl. And, look, you're already off to a 6-1 and one start. Guys are playing at a high level. I'm just saying it's something that I find interesting. Well, you could have used him in that UConn loss, right, when Auburn needed a bucket. He's going to – they'll make a place for him on this basketball team. And because of the style that Coach Bruce Pearl plays, his team guys are better than your team guys. 
I'm sure they'll find a place for them. Right now, the Auburn Tigers continue to do damage here at Auburn Arena. It's V-Week at ESPN, and our partnership with the V-Foundation highlights the urgent need for cancer research and the elimination of racial disparities in cancer outcomes. You can learn more by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donations goes directly to cancer research. Jasper from downtown, back inside Auburn Arena, 72-38. Score tells the story. Hot shooting Tigers from deep now with 10 triples so far this afternoon. Roy, at one point early in the second half, we talked about potentially cutting a 20-plus point lead down to 10. Now, that's <laughs> out of reach right now, obviously. Uh, but I, I give credit for Auburn, as you saw Kelly knock down that three-point shot, for keeping the killer instinct, maybe a little bit too much that time by Dylan Cardwell. He'll pick up the offensive foul on the screen, 44 and white. And you mentioned that earlier. You feel like this team with so many new personalities, it's going to take some time to blend everything together the way Bruce Pearl wants. And, and so at times you may take your foot off the gas. Hadn't happened today. No, it certainly has not. And you remember, you know, the success that Yale has had. You're talking about a team that's only lost four games. I think they're 23 or 24 at home. So, uh, at, but this is a much different situation right they're on the road right now they're playing against a more talented dominant team in the Auburn Tigers Swain was bumped by Jasper picks up the foul let me ask you this just while we're talking about big picture potential 6-1 record top 25 ranking does this team this year have the potential to do what we saw in the first half we played that montage from 2019 Oh, without question. Uh, and now, do, does their guard play have to continue to improve, even though I think their guard play is underrated? Absolutely. Uh, will they have to improve on their half-court execution? I would say so as well. But what I think separates this team is defensively, uh, this is just an appetizer of how good they can be with all of their length and the upside that they have because of the youth in guys like Walker Kessler and Jabari Smith Jr. Uh, the depth on this team is outstanding. Uh, Coach Bruce Pearl has proven that he's one of the best to ever do it. Uh, and this team is going to be difficult to deal with come March. Spin off glass off the mark by Leor Berman. Halfway through our second half, 72-41. Crowd will tell you about the shot clock. And a fresh 20. Another place where they can separate themselves. With the length defensively, they can be different. But I think offensive rebound is something they can continue to improve upon as well. Tapped out, and it will stay on this end. Yeah, in terms of overall rebounding, Auburn now out rebounded the Bulldogs 35-30. Yale kind of held its own in that first half. As you see, Jabari Smith, Cardwell will have a seat on the bench. Keep watching that right wrist, too, for Jabari. Make sure everything's okay. It appears as if it is. Isaiah Kelly doing a nice job trying to work against him on the interior, making him work to get the basketball. Berman up and under. Point blank miss. Nice move. By the way, for those that uh, flipped over to ABC, then came right back here. Baylor held Oklahoma State on fourth and goal, which uh, who knows what that means for Alabama later today on terms of football in the playoff. But doors open for the Crimson Tide, maybe for Notre Dame to sneak in there. Selection well, show tomorrow at noon Eastern, of course. What it means to me is that later on today, you're going to be receiving a text message if there is a quote-unquote upset, would that, be, would that really be an upset? It's Alabama an upset. Winning? It's an upset today okay. just because Georgia, I mean, they're a touchdown favorite, and, and nobody can score against them. So, but I, you're kind of bringing everybody back down to earth a little bit, and I like that. I think we need to hear that today. 
Auburn fans don't want to hear it. <laughs> Right now, Jabari Smith Jr. is settling quite a bit. He can get that shot anytime that he wants. Rebound by Mbang. Kelly launching and connecting. I love the battle right now by Isaiah Kelly and Yale. Uh, Kelly out of Augusta, Georgia, the 6'7", 215-pound junior. Actually played for Atlanta Express, AAU team. Started every game this season. Isaiah Kelly. Auburn back to work. A little stop and pop for Jasper. They're just clicking on all cylinders. Cylinders, excuse me, offensively. And Kelly inside a chance for three. Working against Jabari Smith. He's got eight. And we'll shoot a free throw when we come back. Under eight to go. <laughs> what, six-time world champion and gold medalist, the ninth most decorated female gymnast. That's incredible. Some of the more dedicated athletes in all of sports. No question about it. Full court pressure and a timeout call. No Jasper. Didn't like how that possession was shaping up. Yeah, NIA building towards conference play. Ivy League, you got to win the conference to get in, of course. And yeah, chances are, by the time we get to March, they're going to be in a great position to do it. Cambridge will bounce it off. The Yale player out of bounds. You know, when you look at Auburn, and they've had one and done picks. Uh, but they've also kind of, Coach Bruce Pearl now has kind of branded himself uh, for guys that can play that big guard position. Oscar Coro, Chumo Kiki, JT Thor, and look, Sharif or Cooper, uh, Sharif Cooper are one and done. But especially at that power forward or point forward position, Jabari Smith Jr. has a chance to be one of the best ever to come through here. And I think uh, Auburn and Coach Bruce Pearl have kind of branded themselves as someone who can allow you to have that freedom and play well at that position. Cambridge baseline off the mark. No question about that fish. And, you know, Cooper probably thought he was going to go in the first round. Didn't happen. I think he's going to go on and have a great NBA career. Going to take some time for him to get there. But, you know, could he have come back and been a part of this team for another year? Can Whoa. you imagine that? Whoa. I'm just throwing it out there. Whoa. Well, guys take their different routes. You think about Davion Mitchell, who played at Auburn. And then end up transferring to Baylor, won a national championship, turned into a lottery pick. Uh, everybody needs to go on their own time, but college basketball is a terrific place to be now. Jabari Smith. Cambridge working hard inside. Now the palindrome score, you got 74-47. Bangle claim the rebound. Head to Basahama. And back to the Tigers. If you're Bruce Pearl right now and you're kind of looking at this score, what's the focus? Final six and a half minutes. Same question for James Jones as well. His team probably hasn't played as well as he thought that they sure. would. Sure. Well, for Coach Bruce Pearl, you want your team to keep the same intensity. Uh, first comes the habits and then comes the harvest and so for coach Bruce Pearl He wants to make sure that the habits of his team prepare him for the upcoming schedule uh, Same thing for coach Jones, right? He realizes that they won't play the likes of an Auburn in the Ivy League But he wants to make sure that they continue to play to the demeanor that this team is capable of playing Williams with seven and four rebounds Kelly, top of the key. And Isaiah Kelly now in double figures with 12. Isaiah Kelly really with a nice show here of late. Rejected at the rim. Akimbola.
Not a shot. Not a shot. You know, but you look at the depth right now that's in the basketball game, and there's not a huge drop off for Auburn. You know, you, you talk about teams with depth. Purdue is one of those teams that can throw 19 guys at you in the SEC, Kentucky. Look about how that ball moved from side to side. It's not sticking. And when that happens, it just doesn't allow you for open shots, but also better rebounding lanes. And then, obviously, there's a stretch with another block shot for Auburn. It has truly been a block part of this afternoon. And what really impresses me is that it's different players who are blocking the shots for Auburn. Isaiah Kelly has scored the last 11 for Yale. He sits on the bench. Bulldogs with possession. Well, Akimbola in particular, this is just his third game that he's played in this year it's because you've brought in Walker Kessler. You got Jabari Smith, and these bigs give you a different option. I mean, his time's probably going to come at some point as we get deeper into the season towards conference play. Cotton was fouled, and he'll shoot a pair. But for a player like 23 and White, Papatunde Akimbola, this guy's going to give you some minutes, some quality minutes, some rim protection, sure. some energy, and probably has a larger role at some point. Well, Auburn played UConn, one of the teams that actually did not take in a transfer this year, but for transfers, just take your time. Your time will come, and for guys that are staying at home, uh, it always pays dividends for a coach who knows what you're capable of doing. Cotton has 14 to lead Yale. Johnson wide open. From the corner, spins it in. Johnson with 15. Swain is short, Johnson the rebound. And both teams already in the bonus, under five to go. The one characteristic that all championship teams have, as you see KD Johnson with this three-point shot, is that there's competition every single day that causes the team to improve. It allows the cream to rise to the top. Auburn has that this season. A lot of times, they may have more competition in their internal practices than they may even have during their games. And that's why I say Auburn's not there yet, right? They're in the top 25. I wouldn't put them up there with the likes of the Purdue's and Dukes and Gonzaga's right now. But their ceiling, their potential to get there, and particularly if Al Flanagan comes back, it's something they're certainly capable of. I agree. Yeah. And not just based off what we've seen today. I mean, you're a bucket away in double OT against UConn from being probably in the top 10 right now. Sure. And Connecticut's a good program. Johnson's got 17. And a foul under the bucket. Imbang hit the deck pretty hard. Bez Imbang, freshman out of Maryland. Seventh game of the season. It is that time of year where, you know, football in the regular season, championship weekend comes to a close. A basketball starts to take more of center stage as we get closer to Christmas. And coming up Tuesday night on ESPN, also the ESPN app, Jimmy V Classic returns at MSG, Texas Tech. And number 13, Tennessee, will tip things off at 7 Eastern. And then Villanova and Syracuse, a classic Big East rivalry back in the day at 9 Eastern from the world's most famous arena. All in support, of course, of the Jimmy V Foundation. Go to V.org today. Now you look at Coach Wright against Coach Beheim and the backcourt play of Buddy Beheim versus Colin Gillespie. That's going to be a, an outstanding game. Look at those mixtures of styles and... You know, Coach Bruce Pearl, like many coaches, at times they're on their players even harder when they have a substantial lead than they are when the game's a little bit closer. 
that would annoy me as a player, <laughs> but I get it as a coach, right? You know what I'm talking about. No doubt coach, about Coach, we got this. It's a 28-point game. What are you talking oh, about defense? Good. Shots and the finger roll. Little old-school finish. <laughs> Katie Johnson, I think the, one of the more celebratory athletes in college basketball. If he completes something, he, he's going to find the camera or the crowd just to make sure they knew about it. And look, I think basketball and college basketball in particular needs more of that. Jarvis a chance for three. College basketball needs more. KD Johnson and his 19 points today. <laughs> what's, what's college basketball need more? Some more of this right here, bro. To improve, but it shows their length. It's a testament uh, to their tenacity on the defensive end, and we've seen that here this evening. I want to tell you, too, that 11 of those blocks came in, like, the first seven minutes of this game. <laughs> and it really set the tone as Auburn raced to an 11-0 advantage right out of the gate. Three and a half to go. Auburn Arena, Damian Fishback, Roy Philpott. Uh, Yale will bounce back after a game like this on the road. First ever meeting against Auburn. Akimbola, second three-point attempt is off the mark. Babatunde, Akimbola wants that three-point shot, doesn't he? Babatunde does. <laughs> what do you think? You think he'll get it before the game's over? I don't. <laughs> he may shoot it again. But that's not his game, as you alluded to earlier. I think it's important that we remind our viewers that Yale, <laughs> as Akinbola gets another block, Yale was off all of last season. And so you're looking at their 10th game right now, and people may say, well, that's plenty of time to get your stride back. Not when you're off for a year of basketball. It still takes some time, and they're still trying to get back into – their full zone that they're accustomed to playing. And I mean, even James Jones told you earlier today, they faced Seton Hall, kind of dealing with an environment, a crowd, first time that that's happened in right. over a year. You come into this arena today, Woo. you got the jungle behind us, everybody's going crazy. It, it's a lot to adjust to in the pandemic that we've been living in for almost two years. So the fact that they didn't play hoops last year, you know, significant and everybody kind of adjusting on the fly. Well, and when you speak about adjustments, think about the players, right? You notice that the players, the starters are seniors and juniors, upperclassmen, but not as much experience as you would think, even though they're older in age, they're a lot younger when it comes to experience playing. These guys have seen it from the bench, but they're in different roles this year. Got the walk-ons, check it in. Little Preston Cook, Carter Sobera. And a chance for Bruce Pearl to empty his bench. Two and a half and change remaining. And I tell you what, Fish, a lot of fans have left across the way. The student section behind us has not, and they're just as loud now <laughs> as they were two hours ago. We talked about environments earlier, right? Pavilion, camera, indoor. You think about environments throughout the SEC, you can go anywhere from Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Arkansas. Every single night, the jungle here at Auburn is always ready. And we should point out as well, the student section, the jungle, just won a bunch of fries because Yale missed two straight free throws. So apparently that's an ongoing thing here. <laughs> Congrats to all involved. You gotta love college basketball coming back like this. I don't think there's anything better. Sweet finish for Jarvis. Well, we talked a little bit about the matchups coming up the way. Number nine, UK taking on Southern over on SEC Network. It's a 7 o'clock Tuesday, live from Rupp. Top 10 Arkansas also in action against Charlotte out of Conference USA. Game will tip off at 9 o'clock Eastern over on SEC Network and the ESPN app. Little JT Note getting it done for Coach Muss leading the SEC in scoring as yeah. of last check. I think Arkansas has done an outstanding job of mixing the transfers with their returners. 
Uh, Coach Musselman always does a great job of transfers. Cook's got to heave it. Oh, it's glass, and why not? <laughs> Senior from right here, Auburn, Alabama, and Auburn High School. And inside the bucket for Lansford. Well, you mentioned this for Coach James Jones and Yale. I don't think they'll face too many environments tougher than what they face today. Uh, and I don't think they'll face too many teams that have the combination of fortitude, tenacity, length, and talent as Auburn throughout the rest of the year. Jake Lampert, native of Charleston, South Carolina. Off the mark with a free throw and a foul inside. Free throws coming. Now for those tuning in, you see Temple and Penn will send you up to Philly as soon as we're done here on the Plains. Come on, Carter. <laughs> One more. Let's get that box score. Carter says, I've worked hard in practice all year long, Roy. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can, but I'm taking advantage of these minutes. As he should. You check in off the bench late in the game for maybe one of three or four contests you're going to play all year. I'm coming in chucking. I'm coming in chucking threes. <laughs> all right. That's just me. <laughs> hey, I'm waiting for Mark Weiss and you to get going now. You know, it doesn't take him but a split second. If it gets under a minute, he's hollering. You I, gotta I, shoot it. That's right. <laughs> I, I learned from him. Don't waste any time. You check in. Go ahead. Get it done. Mosdorp will get one more free throw. And he'll make it. Could be the final possession of the game. Game that has been dominated by the Auburn Tigers. Auburn will improve to 7-1. and one. Step back three. Yale will fall to 5-5. Five and five. And bang. One point five seconds to go. And then we'll call it a day. Fish always fun being on site. No hanging doubt. out with you for a no couple doubt. hours. One of the better environments we've seen all year. Gonna be a tough place to play for multiple teams. Now thirty seven non conference victories for Auburn. Uh, they are one of the best teams in the country, certainly one of the best teams in the SEC. This is going to be an impeccable year. Right now, the SEC actually has the second best winning percentage, uh, I believe, behind the Big 12 uh, of anybody in the country. So you talk about, you know, Yale struggling in here. SEC fans and teams should be put on notice for the Auburn Tigers. There. Here's Mastor, the other end. And a free throw off the mark. 86-64, the final score. James Jones, Bruce Pearl. Exchange.